I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. In the quaint town of Maplewood, life was peaceful and predictable. Nestled in the heart of the countryside, it was a place where everyone knew everyone and children played freely in the streets. The residents took pride in their tight-knit community and picturesque surroundings. One such resident was Sarah Thompson, a single mother raising her 10-year-old son, Alex. They lived in a cozy house on the edge of town, surrounded by lush woods and open fields. Sarah worked as a nurse at the local clinic, and Alex was a bright and energetic boy who loved exploring the outdoors. One warm summer evening, Sarah and Alex decided to take their dog, Max, for a walk through the nearby woods. Max, a friendly golden retriever, was loved by everyone in the neighborhood. As they walked along the well-worn path, the sun began to set, casting a golden glow through the trees. Mom, can we go to the old clearing? Alex asked, his eyes sparkling with excitement. Sarah hesitated. The clearing was a bit further into the woods, and it would be dark soon, but she knew how much Alex loved it there. All right, but we won't stay long, she said, smiling. They made their way to the clearing, Max bounding ahead, his tail wagging. The clearing was a beautiful, open space surrounded by tall trees with wildflowers dotting the grass. Alex ran around, playing with Max, while Sarah watched, feeling content. As dusk settled in, Sarah called out, Alex, it's time to head back. Alex nodded and whistled for Max, who came running. They started back towards the path the woods growing darker and more foreboding. Suddenly, Max stopped, his ears pricked up, and he began to growl. What's wrong, boy? Sarah asked, feeling a twinge of unease. Max's growl grew louder, and he barked, staring intently into the shadows. Sarah and Alex followed his gaze, but saw nothing. The woods were eerily silent, the usual sounds of wildlife absent. Let's keep moving, Sarah said, her voice trembling slightly. She took Alex's hand, and they quickened their pace, Max still growling and barking intermittently. As they neared the edge of the woods, Max suddenly lunged forward, snarling and barking furiously. Sarah and Alex turned to see a large, dark shape emerging from the shadows. It was a massive dog, its eyes glowing with an unnatural light. The creature looked like a twisted version of a domestic dog, its fur matted and patches of skin raw and bloody. Max barked and growled, placing himself between the monstrous dog and his family. The creature let out a guttural snarl and lunged at Max. The two dogs clashed, teeth bared, growls filling the air. Run, Alex! Sarah screamed, pulling her son towards the house. They sprinted down the path, the sounds of the brutal fight echoing behind them. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest as she glanced back, seeing Max fighting valiantly but being overwhelmed by the larger dog. They burst out of the woods and into the open field. Sarah pulled out her phone and dialed 911, her voice shaking as she explained the situation. They continued to run towards the safety of their home, praying that Max would be okay. Within minutes, the police and animal control arrived. They hurried into the woods, flashlights cutting through the darkness. Sarah and Alex waited anxiously by the edge of the trees, hoping for any sign of Max. After what felt like an eternity, one of the officers emerged, carrying Max in his arms. Max was injured, but alive, his fur matted with blood. Sarah rushed to him, tears streaming down her face. He's going to be okay, the officer reassured her. We need to get him to a vet immediately. Animal Control had managed to capture the monstrous dog, sedating it and loading it into a truck. The creature growled and thrashed weakly, its eyes still glowing with an eerie light. Sarah and Alex took Max to the vet, where he received immediate care. His injuries were severe, but the vet was confident he would recover. They returned home, exhausted and shaken, but relieved that Max was safe. Over the next few days, the town buzzed with news of the attack. It turned out that several pets had gone missing in recent weeks, and the captured dog was likely responsible. The animal was unlike anything the local authorities had ever seen, and its behavior and appearance were deeply unsettling. No An investigation was launched to determine where the creature had come from, it was soon discovered that the dog had escaped from a nearby research facility. The facility had been conducting experiments on animals, and the creature was the result of genetic manipulation gone horribly wrong. The revelation sent shockwaves through the community. The research facility was shut down, and its operators faced serious charges for their unethical practices. 
The townspeople were horrified that such experiments had been conducted so close to their homes. Despite the closure of the facility, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling of unease. She began having nightmares about the creature, its glowing eyes haunting her sleep. Alex, too, was deeply affected, becoming more withdrawn and anxious. One night, as Sarah sat on the porch with Max, she heard a rustling in the bushes. Max's ears perked up, and he growled softly. Sarah's heart raced as she peered into the darkness, but saw nothing. She couldn't help but wonder if there were more creatures out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to strike. The peaceful town of Maplewood had been forever changed by the horrors that had emerged from the woods. The residents were more cautious, their sense of security shattered, and Sarah knew that, though the immediate danger had passed, the memory of that terrifying night would stay with her forever. As the days turned into weeks, Sarah and Alex tried to return to their normal lives, but the events of that fateful evening had left a lasting mark on them, a reminder of the unseen menace that could lurk just beyond the edge of the familiar, waiting to strike when least expected. And so, they remained vigilant, always watching, always wary, knowing that the peace of their small town could be shattered at any moment by the horrors hidden in the darkness. Weeks turned into months, and the fear that had gripped Maplewood began to slowly subside. But for Sarah and Alex, the sense of dread never truly left. Max was healing physically, but his once cheerful demeanor had been replaced by a cautious, almost paranoid vigilance. He would often growl at shadows and refuse to go near the woods. Sarah and Alex tried to reclaim some normalcy, but the trauma lingered. Alex became more withdrawn, spending less time outside and more time alone in his room. Sarah, too, found herself constantly on edge, jumping at the slightest noise. One crisp autumn evening, as the sun set and the sky turned a deep bruised purple, Sarah decided they needed a change of scenery. How about we drive to the lake for a picnic dinner, she suggested to Alex, trying to sound upbeat. Alex hesitated but eventually agreed. They packed some sandwiches, grabbed a blanket, and loaded Max into the car. The drive to the lake was quiet, the road winding through the serene countryside. The sight of the water reflecting the twilight sky brought a brief sense of peace to Sarah. They found a secluded spot by the lake and spread out the blanket. Max seemed to relax a bit, sniffing around and wagging his tail. For the first time in weeks, Sarah felt a glimmer of hope that things might return to normal. As they ate, a dense fog began to roll in, creeping over the lake and enveloping the surrounding trees. The air grew cold, and an eerie silence settled around them. Max's ears perked up, and he let out a low growl, staring intently into the fog. Mom, do you hear that? Alex whispered, his voice trembling. Sarah listened, her heart pounding. At first she heard nothing but the lapping of the water against the shore, but then, faintly, she heard it. A rustling sound, like something moving through the underbrush. Let's pack up and go, Sarah said, trying to keep her voice steady. They quickly gathered their things, but as they stood up to leave, Max bolted towards the fog, barking furiously. Max, no! Sarah shouted, running after him with Alex close behind. The fog was thick, making it difficult to see more than a few feet ahead. They followed Max's barks, their fear growing with each step. Suddenly, the barking stopped. They stumbled into a small clearing, the fog swirling around them. Max stood in the center, his body tense and his teeth bared, staring at something just beyond the edge of the clearing. Sarah and Alex froze as a familiar shape emerged from the fog. It was another dog, similar to the one that had attacked them in the woods, its eyes glowing with an unnatural light. But this time, there were more of them. Three, Four, five pairs of glowing eyes appeared, surrounding them. Sarah's breath caught in her throat. Alex, stay close to me, she whispered, her voice shaking. She grabbed a fallen branch, holding it like a weapon, her hands trembling. The monstrous dogs closed in, their growls rumbling like thunder. Max stood his ground, growling and barking, but he was hopelessly outnumbered. In a sudden coordinated attack, the creatures lunged. Max fought bravely, but he was quickly overwhelmed. Sarah swung the branch wildly, trying to fend off the attackers, but it was futile. One of the dogs knocked her to the ground, its teeth sinking into her arm. She screamed in pain, struggling to push it away. Alex, terrified but determined, grabbed a rock and hurled it at one of the dogs. The creature yelped and turned on him, 
its glowing eyes filled with rage. Just as the monstrous dog was about to pounce on Alex, a deafening roar echoed through the clearing. The creatures hesitated, their ears flattening against their heads. Emerging from the fog was a massive figure, even larger than the dogs. It was the source of the earlier roar, a monstrous, mutated beast that seemed to be the Alpha of the pack. The Alpha's eyes glowed even brighter, and with a single commanding growl it ordered the pack to retreat. The dogs backed away, disappearing into the fog. The Alpha stood over Sarah and Alex, its eyes locked onto theirs. Sarah, bleeding and in pain, managed to pull Alex close to her, shielding him with her body. Please, she whispered, tears streaming down her face. Don't hurt my son. The Alpha tilted its head, studying them for what felt like an eternity. Then, to their astonishment, it turned and melted back into the fog, its pack following. The clearing fell silent, save for Sarah's ragged breathing and Max's whimpering. Sarah managed to get to her feet, her arm throbbing with pain. She and Alex helped Max up, and together they stumbled back to the car. They drove home in silence, the fog gradually lifting as they left the lake behind. The next morning, Sarah called the authorities, recounting the horrifying encounter. They launched an investigation, but found no trace of the monstrous dogs or their alpha. The research facility was thoroughly searched, but no evidence of other creatures was discovered. Despite the lack of evidence, the residents of Maplewood remained vigilant. The story of the attack spread, fueling rumors and fears. People were more cautious, and the once peaceful town took on an air of unease. Sarah and Alex knew they would never forget that terrifying night. The encounter had left them with physical and emotional scars that would take a long time to heal. They were grateful to be alive, but the memory of the glowing eyes and the monstrous Alpha haunted their dreams. As the years passed, the legend of the monstrous dogs and their Alpha became a part of Maplewood's folklore, a chilling reminder of the dangers lurking just beyond the edge of the familiar. And though the immediate threat seemed to have passed, Sarah and Alex knew that the horrors they had faced were always out there, waiting for the right moment to strike again. In the suburban town of Greenfield, the community park was a beloved haven. Every evening, families gathered, children played on the swings, and dogs chased after balls in the wide, open spaces. It was a place of laughter and leisure, where everyone felt safe. Melissa Carter, a single mother, often brought her five-year-old daughter Lily to the park after work. Their golden retriever Daisy would join them, running through the grass and playing fetch. It was a routine they cherished, a time to unwind and bond after a long day. One warm autumn evening, as the sun began to set, Melissa and Lily arrived at the park. The golden hues of the setting sun bathed the park in a serene glow. Daisy bounded out of the car, her tail wagging furiously. Let's go to the playground, Mommy, Lily said, tugging at Melissa's hand. All right, sweetie, let's go, Melissa replied, smiling. As they walked towards the playground, Daisy ran ahead, chasing after a group of birds that had settled on the grass. The park was unusually quiet, with only a few other families scattered around. Melissa noticed a large, dark dog sitting alone near the edge of the park, its eyes following Daisy intently. Stay close, Daisy, Melissa called out, her voice tinged with unease. Daisy, oblivious to the other dog, continued to play. Melissa and Lily reached the playground, and Lily immediately ran to the swings. Melissa pushed her gently, her eyes occasionally drifting back to the dark dog, which hadn't moved, but still watched them closely. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the park, the temperature began to drop. Melissa shivered and called Daisy back to her side. Daisy trotted over, panting happily. It's getting late, Lily. Let's head home, Melissa said, lifting her daughter from the swing. Just as they were about to leave, the dark dog stood up. Its eyes locked onto Daisy, and it began to move towards them, its movement slow and deliberate. Melissa's heart skipped a beat as she picked up Lily and held her close. Come on, Daisy, let's go, she said, trying to keep her voice calm. Daisy barked at the approaching dog, her body tense. The dark dog snarled in response, baring its teeth. Melissa's unease turned to fear as she realized the dog was much larger and more aggressive than she had initially thought. Stay back, Melissa shouted, but the dark dog ignored her, continuing its advance. 
In a flash, the dark dog lunged at Daisy, its teeth sinking into her side. Daisy yelped in pain and tried to fight back, but the other dog was relentless. Melissa screamed for help, but the park was now deserted. Mommy, I'm scared, Lily cried, burying her face in Melissa's shoulder. It's okay, baby, I'm here, Melissa said, her voice trembling. Desperate to save Daisy, Melissa grabbed a nearby stick and ran towards the fighting dogs. She swung the stick at the dark dog, hitting it on the back. The dog growled and released Daisy, turning its attention to Melissa. Daisy, wounded and whimpering, staggered away from the attacker. Melissa swung the stick again, but the dark dog was too quick. It lunged at her, knocking her to the ground. She struggled to fend it off, her mind racing with fear and adrenaline. Just then, a loud whistle pierced the air. The dark dog froze, its ears perking up. Melissa looked up to see a man running towards them, a leash in his hand. Get off her, the man shouted, grabbing the dog by the collar and pulling it away. Melissa scrambled to her feet, her body shaking. The man struggled to control the dog, which continued to growl and snap. I'm so sorry, he said, his face pale. He got away from me. Are you all right? Melissa nodded, her breath coming in ragged gasps. I think so, my dog. Daisy, she's hurt. Lily ran to Daisy, who lay on the grass, whimpering. Melissa knelt beside her, checking her injuries. There were deep bite marks on her side, and she was bleeding heavily. We need to get her to a vet, Melissa said, her voice breaking. The man, looking horrified and remorseful, helped Melissa carry Daisy to the car. I'll cover the vet bills. I'm so sorry. This is my fault. Melissa nodded, too focused on Daisy to respond. They drove to the nearest emergency vet, where Daisy was taken in for immediate treatment. Melissa and Lily sat in the waiting room, their hearts heavy with worry. Hours passed, and the vet finally emerged with a tired but reassuring smile. Daisy is going to be okay. She has some deep wounds, but we've stitched her up, and she should recover with time and care. Relief washed over Melissa, and she hugged Lily tightly. Thank you, doctor. The man who owned the dark dog approached them, his expression filled with regret. I'm so sorry for what happened. I had no idea he could be so aggressive. I'll make sure he's secured and doesn't hurt anyone else. Melissa looked at him, her anger tempered by exhaustion. Just make sure it never happens again. They took Daisy home, where she slowly began to recover. The physical wounds healed, but the emotional scars lingered. Daisy became more timid and wary around other dogs, and Melissa found herself constantly on edge, fearing another attack. The incident had left a mark on their lives, a reminder of how quickly things could change. The peaceful days at the park were replaced with caution and vigilance. Melissa and Lily continued their routine, but the shadow of that night never fully lifted. One evening, as they sat in the living room, Daisy resting at their feet, Melissa heard a noise outside. Her heart raced as she peered through the window, but there was nothing there, just the wind rustling the leaves. Mommy, is everything okay? Lily asked, sensing her mother's tension. Everything's fine, sweetie, Melissa said, forcing a smile. We're safe. But deep down, she knew that the memory of the attack would always be with them, a silent reminder of the unseen dangers that could lurk in the most unexpected places. And as the days turned into weeks, the fear remained, a constant companion in their lives. As weeks turned into months, life in Greenfield began to settle back into a semblance of normalcy. Daisy's physical wounds healed, but her spirit remained somewhat broken. She was no longer the carefree golden retriever who joyfully bounded through the park. Instead, she was skittish, always watching the shadows. Melissa and Lily, too, were changed. Melissa's vigilance turned to paranoia, her eyes darting to every shadow, every unfamiliar sound. Lily, sensing her mother's constant anxiety, became more withdrawn, her once vibrant energy dampened by an unspoken fear. One particularly cold and dark evening, Melissa was preparing dinner when she noticed Daisy growling softly at the back door. The fur on the dog's neck stood on end, and she stared intently into the backyard. Melissa's heart rate quickened as she approached the door, her breath fogging up the glass. The backyard was empty, save for the gently swaying trees. Melissa shook her head, trying to dispel the unease. It's nothing, Daisy, just the wind, she said, trying to convince herself as much as her dog. That night, after putting Lily to bed, Melissa settled down with a book, hoping to distract herself. 
Daisy lay at her feet, still occasionally growling. The house was eerily quiet, the only sound the ticking of the old clock on the wall. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed from outside, followed by Daisy's frantic barking. Melissa jumped up, her heart pounding in her chest. She grabbed a flashlight and cautiously approached the back door, her hands shaking. She opened the door to see the garbage cans overturned, their contents strewn across the yard. Daisy ran outside, barking furiously. Melissa's flashlight beam cut through the darkness, revealing nothing but the scattered trash. Her mind raced with possibilities. Was it just a raccoon, or something more sinister? She called Daisy back inside and locked the door, double-checking the locks. As she turned to head back inside, she noticed something strange on the ground near the overturned cans, a trail of dark, wet footprints leading from the woods to the edge of her yard. Her blood ran cold as she realized they were not animal tracks, but human footprints. Melissa's fear intensified. She quickly called the police, reporting the footprints and the overturned garbage cans. The officers arrived promptly, but their search yielded no results. They reassured Melissa that they would increase patrols in the area and advised her to keep her doors and windows locked. That night, sleep eluded Melissa. She lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, her mind replaying the events of the evening. Daisy slept restlessly at the foot of the bed, occasionally growling and shifting. The unease in the house was palpable. A few nights later, the same unsettling feeling returned. Melissa woke in the middle of the night to the sound of Daisy barking furiously. She rushed to the window, her heart pounding. This time, she saw a shadowy figure standing at the edge of the woods, its eyes reflecting the moonlight. Melissa's breath caught in her throat. She reached for her phone to call the police again, but hesitated, her hands trembling. The figure stood motionless, watching the house. After what felt like an eternity, it turned and disappeared into the darkness. The next morning, Melissa found another set of footprints leading from the woods to the house, this time closer. Panic set in as she realized that whoever, or whatever, was out there was getting bolder. She decided to install security cameras around the property, hoping to catch the intruder on tape. Days turned into weeks, and the cameras recorded nothing unusual. But Melissa's unease grew, her fear gnawing at her sanity. She became a shadow of her former self, constantly on edge, her paranoia affecting her relationship with Lily. One stormy night, the tension reached its breaking point. The wind howled outside, rattling the windows, and the rain battered the house. Melissa sat in the living room, her nerves frayed, watching the security feed on her laptop. Daisy suddenly started barking again, louder and more frantic than ever before. Melissa's heart leaped into her throat as she checked the cameras. To her horror, she saw the dark figure standing in the backyard, closer than ever, staring directly at the camera. The figure moved towards the house, its eyes glowing with an eerie light. Melissa grabbed a kitchen knife and ran upstairs to Lily's room, her mind racing with fear. She locked the door behind her and held Lily close, her heart pounding. It's going to be okay, sweetie. I'm here, she whispered, her voice trembling. The power suddenly went out, plunging the house into darkness. Melissa's laptop screen flickered and died, cutting off the security feed. Daisy's barking turned to snarls and growls as she faced the unseen threat. Melissa heard a loud crash downstairs, followed by the sound of heavy footsteps. Her breath caught in her throat as she realized the intruder was inside the house. She held Lily tighter, her mind racing for a way to protect them. The footsteps grew louder, ascending the stairs. Melissa's hands shook as she held the knife, ready to defend her daughter at any cost. The doorknob rattled and then the door burst open, revealing the dark figure standing in the doorway. The figure stepped into the room, its eyes glowing with a malevolent light. Daisy lunged at it, but the figure swatted her away with a terrifying strength. Melissa screamed, her voice filled with desperation and fear. As the figure advanced, Melissa swung the knife, but it was knocked out of her hand with ease. The figure grabbed her by the throat, lifting her off the ground. She struggled, gasping for breath, her vision blurring. Mommy! Lily screamed, her voice filled with terror. With a final desperate effort, Melissa kicked the figure, breaking its grip. She fell to the floor, gasping for air and scrambled to her feet, grabbing Lily's hand. Run, Lily, run! She screamed, pushing her daughter towards the window. Lily climbed out onto the roof. Melissa close behind. The rain poured down, making the roof slick and dangerous. They scrambled towards the edge, their hearts pounding with fear. The figure followed them onto the roof, 
moving with an unnatural speed and agility. Melissa and Lily reached the edge and looked down, their minds racing. It was a long drop, but they had no choice. Jump, Lily! I'll catch you! Melissa shouted, her voice filled with determination. Lily hesitated, her eyes wide with fear. The figure advanced, its eyes glowing with a terrifying intensity. With a deep breath, Lily jumped, her small body plunging into the darkness. Melissa jumped after her, the wind rushing past her as she fell. She landed hard, the impact jarring her bones. Pain shot through her body, but she forced herself to her feet, searching for Lily. Lily, are you okay? She called out, her voice trembling. I'm here, Mommy, Lily replied, her voice shaking. Melissa scooped her up and ran towards the street, her mind racing. She could hear the figure behind them, its footsteps heavy and relentless. Desperation fueled her, giving her the strength to keep going. They reached the street and flagged down a passing car. The driver, a kind-hearted man, pulled over and let them in, his eyes wide with concern. What's going on? He asked, his voice filled with worry. Just drive, please, just drive, Melissa begged, her voice shaking. The man sped away, the dark figure fading into the distance. Melissa held Lily close, her heart pounding with fear and relief. They had escaped, but the terror of that night would haunt them forever. The police were called, and an investigation was launched, but no trace of the intruder was ever found. The security footage was reviewed, but the cameras had been tampered with, and the recordings were useless. Melissa and Lily moved away from Greenfield, hoping to find peace and safety in a new town. But the memory of that night lingered, a constant reminder of the unseen menace that had shattered their lives. And though they tried to rebuild and move on, the fear remained, a shadow that followed them wherever they went, a silent reminder of the horrors that could lurk just beyond the edge of the familiar, waiting to strike when least expected. In the small town of Brooksville, nestled among the rolling hills and dense forests of New England, life was peaceful and predictable. The residents took pride in their close-knit community, where everyone knew everyone, and crime was almost non-existent. It was a place where families felt safe and children played outside without fear. Jess Martin, a 32-year-old elementary school teacher, lived on the outskirts of Brooksville with her golden retriever, Rusty. Jess had moved to the town two years ago to escape the hustle and bustle of city life. She loved the tranquility and the sense of community that Brooksville offered. One cool autumn evening, Jess decided to take Rusty for a walk along the nature trail that wound through the nearby woods. It was their favorite spot, a place where Jess could unwind and Rusty could run free. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows through the trees, Jess felt a sense of calm wash over her. They had been walking for about 20 minutes when Rusty suddenly stopped, his ears pricked up, and his body tense. Jess followed his gaze and saw a large black dog standing on the trail ahead. The dog was unlike any she had seen before, its fur was matted, its eyes glowed eerily in the fading light, and it emitted a low, menacing growl. Easy, Rusty, Jess said softly, trying to keep her voice steady. She reached for Rusty's leash, but before she could secure it, the black dog lunged at them. Rusty barked furiously, placing himself between Jess and the attacker. The two dogs clashed violently, their growls and barks echoing through the woods. Jess screamed for help, but there was no one around to hear her. She looked around frantically, hoping to find something to defend herself and Rusty. Her eyes fell on a large stick lying on the ground. She grabbed it and ran towards the dogs, swinging the stick with all her might. She managed to hit the black dog, causing it to yelp and release its grip on Rusty. The black dog snarled and turned its glowing eyes on Jess. Terrified, Jess swung the stick again, but the dog dodged and lunged at her. She stumbled backward, losing her balance and falling to the ground. The black dog was on her in an instant, its teeth bared and its growl vibrating through her bones. Rusty, despite his injuries, attacked the black dog with renewed fury. The two dogs fought viciously, and Jess scrambled to her feet, desperate to help Rusty. She swung the stick again and again, finally managing to strike the black dog hard enough to knock it off balance. The black dog retreated a few steps, its eyes still fixed on Jess. For a moment she thought it might attack again, 
but then it turned and disappeared into the shadows, its growl fading into the distance. Jess dropped the stick and rushed to Rusty, who lay on the ground, panting and bleeding. Oh, Rusty, no! She cried, tears streaming down her face. She pulled out her phone and called 911, her hands shaking as she explained the situation. Help is on the way, the operator assured her. Stay with your dog and try to keep him calm. Jess sat beside Rusty, stroking his fur and whispering soothing words. She could feel his body trembling, and she prayed that help would arrive in time. The minutes dragged on, each one feeling like an eternity. Finally, she heard the distant wail of sirens. Moments later, a police car and an animal control vehicle arrived, followed by an ambulance. The paramedics rushed to Jess and Rusty's side, administering first aid to the injured dog. The police officer, a tall man with a kind face, approached Jess. Are you all right, ma'am? He asked gently. I'm fine, Jess replied, her voice shaking. But Rusty, he's hurt badly. We'll do everything we can to help him, the officer said. Can you tell me what happened? Jess recounted the attack, her voice breaking as she described the black dog and its glowing eyes. The officer listened carefully, taking notes. You're not the first person to report seeing that dog, he said when she finished. There have been several similar incidents in the past few weeks. We'll do our best to find it and make sure it can't hurt anyone else. The animal control officer approached, his expression grim. We're going to take Rusty to the emergency vet, he said. He needs immediate treatment. Do you want to ride with us? Yes, please, Jess said, her heart aching for her loyal companion. The ride to the emergency vet was a blur of flashing lights and sirens. Jess sat beside Rusty, holding his paw and praying that he would survive. The vet clinic was a small but well-equipped facility, and the staff sprang into action as soon as they arrived. Jess paced the waiting room, her mind racing with worry and fear. She couldn't bear the thought of losing Rusty, her faithful friend and protector. Hours passed, and finally, the vet emerged, his expression serious but hopeful. Rusty is stable, he said. He's got some deep wounds, but we managed to stitch him up, and he's responding well to the treatment. He'll need to stay here for a few days, but I think he's going to be okay. Jess let out a breath she didn't realize she had been holding. Thank you, doctor, she said, her voice choked with emotion. Over the next few days, Jess visited Rusty every chance she got. The vet staff took excellent care of him, and he slowly began to recover. Despite his physical improvement, Rusty's spirit seemed broken. He was wary and skittish, constantly on edge. Meanwhile, the police and animal control continued their search for the black dog. They set up traps and conducted patrols, but the elusive creature remained at large. The town of Brooksville was on high alert, the once peaceful community now gripped by fear. One night, as Jess was getting ready for bed, she heard a noise outside. It was a low, menacing growl, the same sound she had heard on the night of the attack. Her heart raced as she peered out the window, her eyes scanning the darkness. There, at the edge of her yard, stood the black dog. Its eyes glowed with an eerie light, and it seemed to be staring directly at her. Jess's blood ran cold. She grabbed her phone and called the police, her voice trembling as she reported the sighting. Stay inside and lock your doors, the dispatcher instructed. Officers are on their way. Jess did as she was told, but she couldn't shake the feeling of dread that had settled over her. She watched the dog from the window, its glowing eyes never leaving her. It seemed to be waiting, biding its time. The sound of sirens shattered the silence and the dog vanished into the shadows. The police arrived moments later, their flashlights cutting through the darkness as they searched the area. But once again, the black dog was nowhere to be found. The next morning, Jess found a chilling sight in her yard. The ground was littered with the carcasses of small animals, their bodies mangled and torn. The black dog's calling card. Jess felt a wave of nausea and fear. This wasn't just an attack, it was a message. The police increased their patrols, and animal control set more traps, but the black dog remained elusive. The people of Brooksville were living in fear, their once tranquil lives shattered by the unseen menace. One evening, as Jess was sitting on the porch with Rusty, she heard a rustling in the bushes. Rusty growled, his body tense. Jess's heart pounded as she stood up, her eyes scanning the shadows. The black dog emerged from the bushes, its eyes glowing with a malevolent light. 
Rusty barked furiously, placing himself between Jess and the intruder. The dog snarled, its teeth bared. Jess backed away slowly, her mind racing. She knew she had to protect Rusty, but she was unarmed and alone. She reached for her phone, but the black dog lunged at her, knocking it from her hand. Rusty attacked, but the black dog was too strong. It overpowered him, its teeth sinking into his flesh. Jess screamed, grabbing a nearby shovel and swinging it at the attacker. She managed to hit it, causing it to release Rusty and turn on her. The black dog lunged, knocking Jess to the ground. She struggled, swinging the shovel desperately. The dog bit her arm, and she cried out in pain. Just as it seemed she would be overwhelmed, she heard a loud gunshot. The black dog yelped and fell to the ground, blood oozing from a wound in its side. Jess looked up to see a police officer standing at the edge of the yard, his gun drawn. Are you all right, ma'am? He called out, rushing to her side. Jess nodded, her body shaking. I'm okay, Rusty. He needs help. The officer radioed for backup, and soon the yard was filled with police and animal control officers. The black dog was sedated and taken away, its reign of terror finally over. Jess and Rusty were taken to the hospital, where they were treated for their injuries. As they lay in their hospital beds, Jess felt a sense of relief and gratitude. They had survived, but the experience had left them both scarred. The black dog was identified as a feral animal that had been roaming the area for months. Its aggressive behavior was likely the result of a traumatic past and severe malnutrition. The black dog was identified as a feral animal that had been roaming the area for months. Its aggressive behavior was likely the result of a traumatic past and severe malnutrition. The town of Brooksville breathed a collective sigh of relief, believing the nightmare was finally over. Jess and Rusty returned home to recover, but the sense of security they once felt was shattered. Rusty was more skittish than ever, and Jess found herself constantly looking over her shoulder. The trauma of the attack lingered, casting a dark shadow over their lives. One night, a few weeks after the attack, Jess was awakened by a strange noise outside. It was a low, guttural growl, different from the black dogs, but equally menacing. Her heart pounded as she reached for her flashlight and crept to the window. In the dim light of the moon, she saw another dog, this one even larger than the black dog, with fur so dark it seemed to absorb the light. Its eyes glowed with the same eerie intensity, and it stared directly at her. Jess's blood ran cold. Could there be more of these creatures? She grabbed her phone and dialed 911, her hands trembling. There's another one, she whispered urgently. There's another dog outside my house. The dispatcher assured her that help was on the way, but Jess knew it would take time for the police to arrive. She grabbed a kitchen knife and slowly opened the back door, hoping to scare the dog away before it could attack. Rusty growled and stood by her side, ready to defend her. As they stepped outside, the dog lunged, its growl reverberating through the night. Jess swung the knife, but the dog was fast, too fast. It knocked the knife from her hand and sank its teeth into her leg. Jess screamed in pain, falling to the ground. Rusty attacked, but the dog was enormous, and it quickly overpowered him. Jess tried to crawl away, but the dog turned its attention back to her, its eyes glowing with a terrifying light. Just as the dog was about to attack again, bright headlights flooded the yard. A police car screeched to a halt, and officers jumped out, their guns drawn. The dog growled and backed away, but it didn't flee. Instead, it circled around Jess and Rusty, its eyes never leaving them. Stay back, one of the officers shouted, but the dog ignored the command. The officers opened fire, bullets tearing through the night. The dog yelped and collapsed, its glowing eyes dimming. Jess felt a wave of relief wash over her, but it was short-lived. She heard more growls coming from the darkness. Several pairs of glowing eyes emerged from the trees. There are more of them, she cried out, her voice filled with terror. The officers turned their flashlights toward the trees, revealing at least half a dozen more dogs, each one larger and more menacing than the last. The dogs moved with eerie coordination, their eyes locked onto Jess and the officers. We need backup, one of the officers shouted into his radio. There are too many of them. The dogs advanced, and the officers opened fire again, but it only seemed to slow them down. Jess grabbed Rusty and tried to crawl back toward the house, her leg throbbing with pain. The dogs closed in, their growls echoing through the night. Just as the first dog lunged, a blinding light filled the yard. The dogs stopped and whined, their eyes flickering. Jess shielded her eyes, trying to see what was happening. 
The light grew brighter and brighter, and she felt a strange sensation, as if she were being lifted off the ground. The last thing Jess saw before everything went dark was a massive, shadowy figure standing in the center of the light, its eyes glowing with an intensity that matched the dog's. Jess woke up in a hospital bed, the harsh fluorescent lights stinging her eyes. She looked around, disoriented and confused. Her leg was bandaged, and Rusty lay beside her, his head resting on her arm. You're awake, a voice said softly. Jess turned to see a nurse standing beside her bed. What happened? She asked, her voice weak. The police found you unconscious in your yard, the nurse explained. They brought you here. You were lucky they arrived when they did. Jess tried to remember the events of that night, but her memories were hazy. She recalled the dogs, the glowing eyes, and the blinding light, but everything else was a blur. What about the dogs? She asked. The nurse's expression darkened. The police found several dead dogs in your yard, but they couldn't explain what had happened. There was no sign of the shadowy figure you mentioned. They're still investigating. Jess shivered, a sense of dread settling over her. She knew that whatever had attacked her was not just a pack of feral dogs. There was something more sinister at play, something that defied explanation. As she lay in the hospital bed, Jess couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. She glanced around the room, her heart racing, but saw nothing. Rusty stirred beside her, his eyes filled with the same fear she felt. Days turned into weeks, and Jess and Rusty eventually returned home. The police continued their investigation, but no new leads emerged. The town of Brooksville remained on edge, the sense of safety and security shattered. Jess tried to move on, but the trauma of that night haunted her. She installed new locks and security cameras, but the fear remained. She couldn't shake the feeling that the shadowy figure and the glowing-eyed dogs were still out there, watching and waiting. One stormy night, as Jess lay in bed, she heard a familiar growl outside her window. Her heart raced as she peered through the curtains, her eyes scanning the darkness. There, at the edge of her yard, stood the shadowy figure, its eyes glowing with a terrifying light. Jess's blood ran cold. She knew that this was not over, that the nightmare had only just begun. The figure raised its head and howled, a chilling sound that echoed through the night. Jess grabbed her phone and called the police, but deep down, she knew they wouldn't arrive in time. The glowing eyes appeared one by one, surrounding her house. The dogs had returned, and this time, they brought an even greater terror with them. Jess felt a sense of hopelessness wash over her as she realized there was no escape. The shadowy figure moved closer, its eyes piercing through the darkness. Jess held Rusty close, her body trembling with fear. She knew that this was the end, that the horrors she had faced were only a prelude to something far more terrifying. As the figure reached the window, its eyes glowing brighter than ever, Jess felt a strange sense of calm. She closed her eyes, accepting her fate. The last thing she heard was the sound of breaking glass and Rusty's frantic barking. And then there was only darkness. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 